I love camping my travel trailer and I recently replaced my tow vehicle, a Jeep, with a brand new electric SUV. I'd done a ton of research but still had a voice in my head telling me this could be a complete disaster. Would the car really be able to tow a trailer weighing around 4,000 pounds? Would the range be depleted so badly it would make trips impossible? Am I mad? Keep watching to find out as I take my trailer on three trips, including one on an extreme climb to an elevation of more than 8,500 feet. My name's Scott and welcome to my channel, Scott Smart Home. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about my real world experience towing my 23 feet long travel trailer with my Kia EV9, a three row all electric SUV. At the time of recording, I've now gone on three trips with it and I'll share some of the pros and cons of using a battery powered vehicle, as well as some of the data I got on these trips on efficiency and range. Let's get into it. On the first trip, I went to the spectacular Valley of Fire, about an hour's drive from where I live in Las Vegas. Ordinarily, my EV9 land has a range of 280 miles. That's when not towing. I estimated very roughly that range might be cut in half while towing, so I thought that this round trip of around 100 miles would be pretty safe to do, just in case there was some reason I wouldn't be able to charge the car at the campsite. One really nice feature of my car is that when you plug a trailer into the EV9, it automatically adjusts the estimated range. That includes both the high and low estimates, which I think is a really good approach in this software. Real world range varies, and in this car, that makes it really clear. On this trip, each way, I used 39 kilowatt hours to travel 51 miles in each direction. That's an average of 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That's the standard way uh, to measure efficiency of an EV. Based on that average, that would give a total range of 130 miles if you're using the battery to its fullest extent. So it's a bit less than half the usual range of 280 miles for this car. As is normal for sites for RVs, there was a 50 amp outlet at each spot, so I was able to recharge overnight. This was so convenient, and I'd been driving a regular car, I would have said had to have left the park to find a gas station. But given this was our first trip, I was also glad that the total round trip for this journey was about 78 kilowatt hours. So if I hadn't been able to recharge, it wouldn't have been an issue. The car battery has a capacity of just under 100 kilowatt hours. So we'd have plenty to spare. This trip illustrated the difference that the speed you're going at has a real impact. For about two thirds of this trip, I was on the freeway traveling at 60 miles an hour with an average of 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Once we left the freeway on the approach road to the park, we were traveling at either 45 or 35 miles per hour with an average efficiency of 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour. That's 40% more range going only 15 miles per hour slower. Why the big difference? At least some of that is due to the increase of wind resistance. The large boxy front of the trailer creates a lot of drag. If you go slower, that has less impact. So if I had a more aerodynamic trailer with less height, that would help improve range. But it's not just speed or wind, of course, that impact range, but whether you're going up or down hills. That trip was not flat, it included some hills, but on the next trip we took, this was even more pronounced. On this trip, we went to Willow Beach, another spectacular location about 10 miles south of the Hoover Dam on the Colorado River. This trip was longer, at 67 miles each way, but there was a big difference in the amount of power the car used. On the outbound journey, we started our home in Northwest Vegas at an elevation of 2,300 feet and ended at the campsite at an elevation of only 800 feet. So on the way out, we dropped obviously 1,500 feet and we used 47 kilowatt hours on that journey. But on the way back, we had to gain 1,500 feet and in that journey, we used 61 kilowatt hours. So we used 30% more power on the return journey, despite taking the same route and traveling at the same speed. I used an app on my phone called Altimeter to track the speed, distance, and altitude on all of these trips. This trip was a great example of how much your EV range can be affected based on whether you're on the flat or going up or down hills. More on that later when I tackle a very steep mountain up to 8,500 feet. Anyway, since the total power needed for this round trip was 8% more than the car's 100 kilowatt hour capacity, it was essential to recharge at the site. And again, I was in luck and was able to do that from the 50 amp outlet. What else affects range? Of course, weight matters. 
Our trailer dry weight is 3,265 pounds. That means without any cargo. With all of our stuff, plus the weight of the two of us, that maybe adds, I don't know, a thousand pounds more. The EV9 can tow up to 5,000 pounds, so we have plenty of headroom below that limit. But the more weight you add, the more power you will need. And our EV9 can seat up to six people, so if there'd been four more of us, um, that would have definitely had some impact on the range as well. With two successful trips under our belt, the next one was to be the big test. We're so fortunate living in Las Vegas that we're surrounded by mountains on all sides, and our absolute favorite campground is in the Spring Mountains. The highest peak here is Mount Charleston that tops out just under 12,000 feet. Campground isn't quite that high, it's at an elevation of 8,500 feet. We go here in spring or summer to escape the ridiculous temperatures of Las Vegas. Now, we live at 2,300 feet, so to get to McWilliams Campground, we're going to have to climb over 6,000 feet. And to make matters worse, there is no electricity at this campsite, so there's no possibility to recharge. But it's only a 37 mile trip each way, so theoretically it should be possible to do the round trip on just one charge. But my big worry was the climb up the mountain. How much electricity would that really need? On the way up, we used 49 kilowatt hours, but on the way home, we only used 7 kilowatt hours. A downward slope really helps to regenerate power. On the steepest part of the climb, we traveled 17 miles, climbing 5,000 feet at a speed of 45 miles an hour and got an average of 0.6 miles per kilowatt hour. The total power used for this round trip journey was 56 kilowatt hours. I repeated the exact same trip on another day without towing the trailer and the car alone used 27 kilowatt hours. So slightly less than half the amount used when towing. That round trip total of 56 kilowatt hours fortunately left plenty of headroom for one of the major reasons I bought this particular car. Like an increasing number of EVs, our Kia EV9 allows you to plug in to the onboard outlets and power a device from the car's high voltage battery. So instead of dragging a very heavy and noisy generator with us, we can power our trailer from the car. While each outlet only has a 15 amp capacity, that's completely fine for our needs, as most of the time we're drawing anything from 40 watts with just lights on and up to about 400 watts when the fridge is actually running. We can also run the microwave, toaster, kettle, or even the air conditioner, as long as we only use one of these at a time. One problem with the generator was that it would lose a significant amount of power output at this high elevation. And that's something that affects any normally aspirated engine, but not EVs. So overall, our Kia EV9 is a fantastic tow car. It has 379 horsepower, and even driving up this very steep mountain, it had more than enough power in reserve. And unlike our previous car, the power didn't diminish the higher you got. With a normal gasoline engine, when you're at 8,500 feet like this campground, the power output of that engine will be reduced by 25%. This is because of the reduced oxygen in the air. There's nothing you can do about it. I'd always noticed our gas bar Jeep would struggle the closer we got to the campground. While it was a perfectly good tow car in the flat, when going up a hill at elevation, the higher we went, the more power we would lose. So, does an EV make a good tow vehicle? Yes, it absolutely can be a great tow vehicle, or it could be terrible. It really depends what you're towing, how heavy it is, whether it's adding a lot of wind resistance, how fast are you driving, and are you going to be climbing in elevation? Ultimately, whether an EV will work for you is going to come down to the real world range you get and how easy it is to charge. My Kia EV9 is a really good tow vehicle, and for me, being able to go to an off-grid campsite and power the trailer from the car is a game changer. But this only works because I live a short distance away. And that's really the big disadvantage of towing with an EV, that your range is greatly reduced. We're fortunate where we live to have so many great options within a single battery charge, but if we wanted to go on a 900 mile road trip to Yellowstone, like we did a few years ago, that's going to be a logistical challenge involving a lot more stops and the risk that your trip could be disrupted if even one public charging station along your route is offline. And for now at least, there's also a very big practical issue with public charging stations in that the vast majority of them require you to back your car into a stall. That means you have to disconnect your camper every time in order to recharge. That's quite a hassle if you're doing that every 100 miles or so. 
While pull-through stations are starting to appear, they're rare, so you can't count on those. While charging at a campground is extremely convenient, it isn't a surefire thing either. Some campgrounds don't allow EVs to plug in, even though they may have 50 amp outlets at each site. The other problem is that campsites are not known for their reliable electrical connections. So, for example, if there is a missing ground, your plug-in charger will likely refuse to charge. I'll continue to share my EV experiences, so please hit subscribe if you want to see more of those, and if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. If you want a full rundown of the data I quoted in this video, check the description or visit my website, scottexplains.com. If you want to learn more about the one crucial thing you'll need to add to your car to enable towing, watch this video about installing a brake controller.